Is it, uh, is it fair to say we've all got Aguero? Uh, I don't have Aguero. I don't have Aguero. But, oh my days! The only Stop reason the now. for me, for me. Oh my. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel for the third episode of Front Row Seats. Today I'm also joined by my co-host Owen as always. How are we doing guys? Uh, currently in the car because uh, quarantine has got my entire house decorating. <laughs> so uh, it's just manic in there. So next quiet place is the car. Fair enough. And because we've got a debate going on, we needed a third person to come in. So we got our good friend Michael. Hey guys, you're right. Welcome to your, po- welcome to your first episode on the podcast, Michael. Oh, glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> right, so today, today we're going to talk a little bit different because 2020 is so shit. We're going to look at last decade and how good it was and do our team of the Premier League decade. Our best 11. Yeah, our best 11. We're doing a 4-3-3 formation. Probably the most used in English football over that decade before. So, we might as well get straight on with it. So, in goal, I've got a short list here. We've, I've got a short list of four. We've got Petr Cech. He's played 443 times in the Prem and kept 202 clean sheets. That's all time in the Prem, not just for decade that we'd focus on. on. But he did win three of his four Golden Globes in, this, in the 2010 decade. And he was also won with Premier League twice in the decade we're talking about. The next one, we've got De Gea, who's got 304 appearances and 108 clean sheets with one Golden Glove and one title. Also, he won Man U's player of the season four times. We got Quartar, who played 126 times and kept 48 clean sheets, with one Golden Glove and two Premier League titles. And last but not least, we've got Joe Hart, who's made 340 appearances, kept 127 clean sheets, four Golden Gloves, and two Premier League champions. And I've got honourable mentions to Schmeichel and Edison. So, Michael, who have you got for goalkeeper of a decade? Um, myself, I've got Czech. There's no doubt about it for myself. For goalkeeper, yeah. De, Gea, De Gea is he's been he's been a, he's been a good keeper. He's been linked with Real Madrid all the time and everything like that. I get that perfectly fine mm-hmm. with that. But checks checks won a title. Tell me one of those goalkeepers, except for obviously Joe yeah. Hart. Been De Gea. Uh, do you mean De Gea? De Gea won a title. Yeah, he hasn't won the Premier League though, has he? Yeah. No, he hasn't. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he has. He has. Yeah, he has. Oh. It's only one thing. <laughs> I mean, Chet's got that completely. Why are we? All these, no, all these have won more. The yeah, Czech's got more, but yeah, check for me. Check him for the thing. Check himself. He's he's one of those goalkeepers that you could always stand by. I think for me, it's just a check is just check. You know what I mean? You, you, you yeah. always, you've you've always seen him. Iconic cap. Yeah, you're always gonna get. No, him yeah, I I completely agree. Like, that. I mean, don't get me wrong. They're all great keepers within their own mind. But, like, I've just always got that thought and that memory of, like, every time I watch Czech play, he's just solid all the time. And he's, and he's backed up by, A, the amount of appearances he's made, B, the amount of, you know, titles and trophies he's won, not just the Premier League, but, you know, he's, he's mm-hmm. been the main guy for Chelsea that's took them to FA Cups, League Cups, the lot. Like, for me, Czech is just solid out of all of them. Fair enough. I mean... I've not gone for Czech, but we've lost, I've lost already. But I'm going to put my argument to I've gone with De Gea. I think De Gea, especially for like two or three years, he was the best keeper in the world. Never mind the Premier League, the world. And he won, he won the Prem. He also won the Golden Glove. And he also won Player of the Season four times at Man U. And no other player in Man U's history has won it four times. Yeah, but look at And them. also, no, I know you said, exactly, look at Man U. Like, that, Chelsea's defence was a lot stronger than Man U's been. Yes or no? Over that decade, yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah. And De Gea, is, De Gea basically, single-handedly, got Manchester United second when they came under Jose Mourinho. Yeah, but the thing is, if you've got a good defence, the, the thing is about Czech, is always, like Owen said, he, he's always had a solid performance in goal. He's always been that keeper that you've looked at and you've gone, wow, that is a solid, that is a solid keeper. That's what keeping is all about, basically. It's not just, yeah, for me as well, it's not just about the saves. Like, you take a goalkeeper, it's the presence... It's the presence in the box. It's, you know, I feel like Czech would be more commanding, not only on the pitch, but in the dressing room. Like, at half-time, like, if, if something, if there's been, like, a, a mismatch with the defence or, like, um, a defensive error or, like, people out of position, if, if you're going in at half-time, which keeper's going to bollock the back four? Czech or... Czech, for me, Czech would bollock them more. Fair enough. Fair enough. Right, then we'll, we'll, 
Oh, no, well, I disagree, but we'll have to go check because it's two against one, that's fair enough. Moving on to right back. Um, so the nominations are for like the Oscars. Kyle Walker, who played 248 times, scored seven goals, 20, and got 27 assists, and won Premier League twice. Pablo Zabaleta, who's got 303 appearances, nine goals and 21 assists, and won the Premier League again twice. Cesar Azbequeta got played 262 times, got eight goals and 28 assists, with again two Premier League titles. And then I've got Trent Alexander-Arnold, who obviously he's only been around for a few years, played 84 games, got four goals and 25 assists in the league. And to be fair, they were going to win the Premier League, weren't they? I know we can't count it, but... Yeah, not quite yet. Depends what they do, doesn't Honorable it? Honorable mentions, I've gone for Anonovic. So, I mean, you've kind of gone for two left-backs, so I'm a bit disappointed about. You've not gone for a right-back, have you? Player preference. Player You're preference. right-back's ever, in it? Yeah. Well, I mean, everyone's yeah. on all out, but left back. So explain why. You, tell me what, don't, don't, explain why you haven't gone for Walker, Sabaleta, as Lequetta or Trent Alexander. Well, it's a shame, really. Ideally, I would go for Arnold, but he's just not played enough. Yeah, I think like what has he played? Eighty-four games. Yeah, like you games. in comparison to the rest of them. That's that's not fair, and for me, like that's the only reason I wouldn't have put him there. Okay, so however, me, it's Walker, right? And I think Michael, did you pick Walker as well? Yeah, I picked Walker massively. So and why does Walker not get in your team? Because to me, he's been by far the best right back, if not the best fullback in the decade. Yeah, I I don't. It's not that I. It's not that he's not a good player. Just for me, I just don't. They don't stand out to me. I've just never, like, I've never really watched him properly. I've never really, like, from what I've seen of him, like, just sometimes I think he can be a bit hot-headed. I think he's a, one of them defenders that loses his head. I don't think he's as calm as other players. Just uh, for me, like, from what I've seen from him. I well, think that it's, it's very easy for him to lose his head. And then, obviously, enough. as a defender, if you lose your head, it's not great. So, Mark, me and you both on Walker, so do you want to put our argument why you've gone for Walker? Just, uh, like, uh, the, the point of the reason I've picked Walker is because at Tottenham, he was solid and he earned a move to Man City. At, the, at that point in time, the Champions yeah, of England, when they, when they did win the champion, uh, when they did win um, the Premier right. League, it's the point that he earned his way, yeah, Pep went, yeah. Get why well, I mean, we ain't got Carl Walker, the best right back in the whole of the Premier League. It, but like say, what like you said, probably at this point in time, the whole world, he's just he's just a solid right back for me. Just pacey, yeah. he's strong. He's just he's built. He is built like uh, someone else. Like, you, you <laughs> and he's got two predicted for right back. Exactly, exactly. The stats don't lie. Sort of. Yeah. Know? So we're gonna go for Walker and right back then. Yeah. Is that fair? Because I got Walker as well. That's two against one. Right, left back. Mm-hmm. We've got Patrice Evra, who played 278 times, got seven goals and 21 assists, and won the Premier League twice in the decade. Obviously, he won it a lot more between 2000 and 2010, but obviously, we're just focused on this decade. It's just gone. But Leighton Baines, who was the longest um, player in the decade, uh, 417 appearances, 32 goals, 53 assists. That's all in the competitions. But obviously, he's got one no title or no silverware. Del Cliche, who got... 325 assists, three goals, 18 assists, and won the Premier League twice just in this decade. And then we've got Kolarov, who played 165 times, got 11 goals, 20 assists, and won the Prem again twice. Honourable mentions I've gone for Ashley Cole, but I believe, if we're all right in saying it, it was coming to an end of his like. Yeah, yeah it was the back end, wasn't it? Yeah. I've uh, gone for Andrew Robinson a bit, a bit with Trent. Like He's not been at the higher level enough yet to... You know, yeah, he needs more time. You can't, you can't really call a decade. At the end of a decade. Yeah. I've also gone for um, James Milner because I think Milner gets on the bench because of his, like, he's, do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, Clash Milner's a midfielder left back, but I've got him as a left back, which is an honourable mention because he's been so consistent. Solid. Yeah. So, Owen, who's your left back and why? So, I went with Baines purely. Baines. Uh, one, the guy's solid. Yeah. Like, yes, I know he hasn't had the. Silverware, but yes, he spent his the decade at a club that isn't really. It's never re- they've been consistently near the top, but never been challenging yeah. for, for the top really. four, let alone yeah. the, the the league. But despite that, the most amount of games, solid all the time, solid as a defender. But then the beauty with him is 
he can attack and yeah. he can score. And mm-hmm. the way yeah. he can take a free kick technically is phenomenal. Fair enough. Mark, who are you going for left back? I'm going for Kolarov. Kolarov? Yeah. Um, the reason the reason of Kolarov, when I was when obviously watching the Premier League from the earliest years of the 2010s, 2020, yeah. he just, at Man City, when he was under Mancini, just, he, he was he was just a hard nut. He's just, he's just one of those players that you always need in the, in the club. He's just one of those players that attackers are afraid of, midfielders are afraid of, even defenders are afraid of. Just because Kolarov is just one of those players that gets in there, just isn't afraid to do a two foot challenge. I mean, no, he is, no, 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 he is that, definitely that's what, not. That's what. That's what. And to me, that is what is pinnacle of football. Is like that's all you ever need is hard nut in one team, and then that's it. You've got the Fair rest enough. of players. Fair enough. So we have a bit of a problem, lads, because I've gone for Patrice Evra. So it's a it's a bit of a uh, awkward situation now. The reason I chose Patrice Evra was because I think he was probably Barashi Cole, probably one of the best left backs in the Prem in history. Yeah. Never yeah. I mean, also, that's why I put him on the other wing. He also, for me. Yeah. He also won two Premier League titles in just in this decade alone. Um, so, do we go with Patrice Evra because I know he's got him on the other wing? Or do we drop... It's tough. What are we going to do, boys? How are we going to define who our left back is? It's really difficult, isn't it? Because it's, it's just, they're all good players like within their own right and they all play different aspects. They all if, play the position in different ways, but they play that. They play their style perfectly. Exactly. We can either like because Owen's got Ever on the right back. We can either put mine and his thing for left back, or we can get rid of Ever because I, I do. I will. I will admit the argument as in again a bit like some other players. His his start of a decade was coming to the end of his career. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, he was so coming on. By I will yeah. happily give that. I will happily give up Ever for me to decide whether we go for. Collar Rob or Baines, if that's what we want to do. I mean, personally, I think Baines can just do it all. I've like, I you think, know what? like, not yeah. only can he, not only can he defend, but he has that attacking element. And it's yeah. not even like it's a, a bad attacking element. Like the guy can score, the guy can get down the wing, the guy he, can, he's physically, yeah, like able to do everything. Like you could put him in midfield, and I feel like he'd be comfortable. Michael, that's just my argument. The argument for me is two Premier League titles. You can't, you can't knock that away. It's silverware. That is true. Silverware. That is true. That is true. What, what silverware? How, like you said, Leighton Baines haven't won any silverware. It's the that point. That, I, I, I do get Leighton Baines. He's been, in, he's, he's always been a solid left back and everything like that. That, that's, that's all right. But to be a great player, to me, you've got to have silverware. There's no, there's no yeah. shadow of a doubt that. You know some of the best, some of the best players in the world. Obviously, like you say, that some of them don't have silverware. But it's the mm. point that True. most of them do. Most of them, like Steven Gerrard, like you say, he's never won a Premier League title, but he's won in Europe, dominated Europe. Liverpool did for the, the yeah, season that he was there. For me, it's like a player doesn't make a team. For, you know, right. a team, the team is a team. Right. For me, this is what I'm going to do. I'm picking Liam Baines yeah. only because, only because, right, of like. Conor was here from like, I don't know, 2011 to 2016. Like Baines was here from 2010 to 2019. And he was arguably the best left back in that whole decade. And he's, he's, so, he's so solid. solid. I know what you and mean. he still hasn't won any silverware. Yes, but when you're I, I, with I, I, Everton, I, I, like, no offence to Everton. Yeah, but Everton, not Everton not aren't a terrible side. So, Everton so, aren't a terrible side. They, they, they are, no, ma- they are badly all. managed but, head office. <laughs> But you look at Everton and you do think they are a good side. They are a Premier League side. They're not. They're not a mid. They're not a oh, struggling at the bottom side, are they? They're not. No, not, not they have been there. Wigan, Wigan won the FA Cup. For God's sakes, Wigan got relegated. That they won the FA Cup. <laughs> they How can they Leighton Baines super... not win the FA Cup or the English League Cup? You know what I mean? Just, that, they had Super Benny Watson. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That right. makes sense. Centre backs, <laughs> shortlist, Vincent Company. 265 appearances, 18 goals, 8 assists, and had four Premier League titles. We are Ferdinand. 504 appearances overall, not just in the decade. Um, 11 goals, 8 assists, won two Premier League titles this decade. David Luiz, 185 appearances, 13 goals, 7 assists, 
and got one Premier League title. John Terry got 492 appearances, 41 goals, 12 assists uh, overall, obviously, but then won three Premier League titles this decade. Vidic got 211 appearances, 15 goals, three assists, won two Premier League titles this year. Van Dijk, 148 appearances, 12 goals, three assists, not won the Prem, obviously. And I've got um, Yang Vertonghen, who's got 228 appearances, six goals, four assists, no trophy again. And honorable, honorable mentions, we've gone for Wes Morgan, obviously, because he captained yeah. the, like historic title. So I think, for I'm sure we've all got Vincent Company, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, without a doubt. That. The, the best the guys. Of the decade, yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. You can't argue that. Anyone that anyone that doesn't have him in the, in their team is just. I don't get it because the guy is so solid. I mean, and he's, he's such a leader. Yeah, I was gonna say his leadership was, has been lost this year at Man City, and that's obviously clear and obvious. Yeah. 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 So, Mike, it's what, a shame, what's really. your, um, Why did the, Why did you pick company then? Company, um, just, just to blame you, he's, he's the best, for me, he's the best captain of the decade, yeah. so to say for me. Yeah, I completely agree. He agrees, he's our it, captain. Yeah, he's our captain, yeah. of, the cl- the captain of to the team of the decade, yeah. personally, right. for me. I'm um, it's, it's just the point that you can't be, him as a defender, to be as rock solid as he has, in the plane, the plane of the point that, like you say, he's, he's got, he's got, how many league titles? Two league four, titles. Is four. It? four. Four. Four league yeah. titles. He's got the most out of all these. Obviously, he's not got more than Rio Fernand and John Terry, but in this decade, he's, in this decade alone, he's got in more this than decade. Yeah, yeah exactly. in this decade. And to me, that's. Like I say, I've said, I've said, yeah, said it for the left back. It says it all. It, it, you can't, you can't be a good player and be a great player in the team of the decade right. without winning the title. Fair enough. Then. He's just, he's just so calm as well. Like, he's. Not only like as a captain, but as a defender, he's just head and shoulders above anyone. Not physically, because yeah. the guy's a unit. But yeah. like in any like dice situation, he can just read the game, and it's like right. He's got his back. His back four is solid, and if and his, if his back four are out of place or out of line, or he's not happy with it, he's going to be the first person to let you know. Agreed. Without without a doubt, no matter what game you're playing in, mm-hmm. you know, if it's a friendly or if it's a final, like that guy will tell you how it needs to be and how it needs to go and for me that's just perfect leadership as a defender so who do we partner up with because we have quite an interesting debate now because um, for me David Luiz and Vitonga is not even in conversation they were just on the short list mm. of um, BBC so I've got I'd not even is that fair to say none of those two are even close to it yeah they're not for, not for me they're great they're great again great centre backs but for me yeah they're agreed. not they just don't stand out um f- I feel like Ferdinand and Vidic came to the end of their career in this decade, the start of a decade. The only reason I didn't go with Ferdinand was because um, that decade wasn't really... So then you narrow it, it down is. between John Terry and Van Dyke. Now, Mark, have you gone for Van Dyke? Mm-hmm. And who are you gone for? I've gone for Van Dyke as well. I've gone for Van Dyke. Now, so we cannot... That was pretty, pretty easy, wasn't it? It was very close, though. <laughs> I, I, oh, I remember sitting there and thinking... <laughs> John Terry, like, yeah, because John Terry's the only reason Van Dyke hasn't. And if Michael's going with his argument against Baines, yeah, I know that uh, I've contradicted myself there with that argument. But <laughs> if you look at it in the argument that they sh- they are going to win, they were going to win the Premier League. Yeah, yeah. not that decade though. Yeah, what? Well, well, what do you mean? Twenty twenty. Yeah, mm, no, twenty twenty. Yeah, yeah, no, this season's still. If you can, if you can't the season, season from twenty nine, two thousand nine to twenty ten, then you might as well carry on this season. Fair enough. No, yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Then. Yeah. For me, that was that's what tipped it was the fact that, oh, you know, Terry has has that title, but then at the same time, Liverpool. No one can deny that Liverpool had it this year. Yeah. We don't know what's going to happen yet. It might still, you know. They might still get it if the season continues to play. I know a lot of leagues are coming out and saying now that they're coming to final decisions. So I don't think we're far away from one. But no one will deny that Liverpool should have had it. Yeah. If, well, they, if they don't get it. He's, like you said, he also won, I know we're not doing Champions League, but obviously he won the Champions League with them last year. And obviously yeah. he is the best centre back in the world and has been for the last Even- few years. Yeah, even years, even maybe. at Southampton. Yeah, even at yeah. Southampton, he was solid. Yeah, a, a team like Southampton as well. Southampton have produced some 
brilliant players. Um, <laughs> yes. really Southampton Academy is arguably one of the best around. I'm a scout. Scouting, the players that they've come scouting, out, scout. Yeah, the scouting yeah, yeah. is amazing. Like, they, they have got a good facility of players. I think that I saw one on um, Twitter uh, where it's like Southampton's team they didn't sell anyone. Oh, yeah, I know. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's it's such a ridiculous there. team. It's like, disgusting, isn't it? Bale, isn't it's, it? There's like Bale, there's like. Bale, Alex, uh, Oxane Chamberlain, yeah. Van Dyke. You've got so, Tadic. Sadio Mane. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. You've got oh, you've yeah. got a team there that oh, could yeah. easily that could easily get top four in the Premier League. But yeah, like, oh, 100%. if you didn't sell those players, then you might not have got those players. Exactly, it's exactly. Nice them. Cool. I exactly. Get that. So we so so far we've got Petr Cech and goal, Walker, Cumberland, Van Dyke and Baines. Not a bad back five, that ain't. No, no, it's pretty solid. It's a long list, so you'll have to bear with me on this one. Mm-hmm. Um, trying to get to sh- this is probably about, I think this is the hardest. I think this is a lot harder. There's so than many good players. players. Yeah, I think the attackers are a lot easier than this. So um, we'll start with Mark Carrick, who played 481 times throughout his career in Premier League. He scored 24 goals, got 40 assists, um, but he won the Premier League twice in this decade. David Silva, Fridge won a a set, 301 appearances, 57 goals, 90 assists, four-time Premier League champion. Cam De Bruyne, 146 appearances, 31 goals, 62 assists, three, uh, two Premier League titles, sorry. Christian Eriksen, 226 appearances, 51 goals, 62 assists, but no trophy. Cesc Fabregas, 340, 350 appearances, sorry, 50 goals, 111 assists, two-time champion. Fernandinho, 217 appearances, 18 goals, 15 assists, three-time champion. Steven Gerrard, 504 appearances, 120 goals, 92 assists, no trophy though. Conte got 100, has played 160 games, 10 goals, 10 assists, but won the Premier League twice and won um, player of the season once. Yaya Torre has played 230 times, scored 62 goals, 32 assists, and won the Premier League three times. Honourable mentions, I've got um, Bale, kind of at the start you know before we went to Madrid yeah um, Coutinho Ramsey and Lampard um, a lot of these players have played uh, when I say their appearances obviously like some of them are before the decade like Gerard, Fabregas yeah there's a bit of le- like leeway um, with them isn't there now to be fair I wasn't going to add Stephen Gerrard to the shortlist I think he for me he's in the same category as Lampard I believe that peak was like 2016 yeah before like 2012 like, so we don't really fit in any decade. Does that make sense? Yeah, they're kind of just a, a mid park between a lot of players this decade like, and the last. The only reason I put Gerard in here was because he was in the BBC. When people did the voters in the public, he actually got in the team of the decade. Like, for me, he doesn't get in for me, but I just thought I'd put him in there. The reason why I didn't pick Lampard was the same reason. One of my favorite yeah, players yeah. ever, but he, the fact that he's it's not quite his like, decade, like 2012. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so it's, it's just... I, mean, I say bias, but we'll go on to that in a minute. So, Owen, <laughs> Owen, I want your first centre midfielder, because Owen's got probably the worst centre mids I've ever seen. So, go on. <laughs> right, so, I, I was one, struggling with my... Okay, right I, first one, Ericsson. Well, you're going to have to pitch as good to us, because I can't see this, but go on. Right. I made my centre midfield choices like you, like you said, Dylan. There was a lot of midfielders in there. Mm-hmm. But for me, it was the wrong time point. I.e., like your Gerard and your Lampard. This oh. decade that we're talking about wasn't yeah. that right. So for me, I wouldn't put them in there. Like the 2006 to 2012. If we're doing that kind of era, then yeah, then for me, they they get in. I made my choice going off players that I for me would just technically gifted like when I watch them yes they might not get the goals yes right, they right, might not right. be assisting it as much but as soon as the ball got to their feet in the middle of the park they knew exactly what they were doing where they were doing it and nine times out of ten it worked it might be a pass out to the wing it might be feeding someone else that then plays the ball to get the goal right. I think your wife is playing up, man. And they're kind of like the unsung hero that, for me, is it? Can you hear me still? Yeah, we're just losing you a bit, bro. It must be that outside uh, Wi-Fi. This pitch has gone wrong, Owen. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell. Sky's 
Sports, mate. Sky Sports Wi-Fi. <laughs> it's what people get live. Oh, where's he gone? Oh, he's back. Hello. Oh, hello. Here we go. I'm back. Same data. Sorry, I didn't see that. Did he go off? Sorry, there must have been a bad signal. Did you say he picked Ericsson? Was that a bad signal or was that... Did you mean that? Yeah, did you mean that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> was that a stutter? No, I did. I did it? pick Ericsson. Okay, all right. For me, I think he, he's one of them unsung heroes. He is. Awesome. He is for me. Right then. Michael, who you got as your right centre mid? Right centre mid, David Silver. Thank you. David Silver. Talk to me. <laughs> He, he, uh, a lot of people I know a lot of people will say Kevin De Bruyne and Kevin De Bruyne look at what he did in Germany look at what he did in terms of but David Silva was the Kevin De Bruyne before Kevin De Bruyne turned up would you say he's been there. the best centre midfielder of a decade yeah yeah I agree I agree underrated criminally Un- underrated yeah criminally <laughs> underrated like uh, how he hasn't even had a sniff like do you know when players you see in the Premier League oh he's going to go to Real Madrid he's going to go to you yeah, he's, yeah, going to yeah. go, he's going to go to Barcelona he hasn't had a sniff at all and I think that's the best bit of business that Man City have ever done is signing David Silva you look at well, the, so he's literally the whole decade he is for yeah, decade yeah yeah and it's the point do you know when they obviously when they won the title in the last seconds of the year in 2012 was it 2012-2013 sometime yeah I can't remember which one it was um, it's the point that he he for that player him and Aguero the link up play between them two in that season was the best link up you've ever seen yeah uh, they they he, like I say, he got most. He, I think he got most assists for that season as well. It's the point that it, yeah, he, he has got nine assists, yeah, ninety assists. Over is, is it, yeah, yeah impressive. Just, uh, massively impressive. Owen, have you got silver in your team? Uh, no, that's fine. Um, we'll, we'll, uh, silver goes in for me but again. I do agree. I do agree with what Michael's saying. Yeah, so he's our yeah, right centre mid. Yeah, like Silver should be in there to be fair. Oh, he's getting warm. Yeah. The jacket's coming off. Yeah, he's going to strip warm. tees. Oh, All right, oh, so he's our centre. He's our first centre mid. So our second centre mid, Michael, go to you first. Who you got alongside him? Your first one. I'm going to Kante. Kante, good choice. Right, why have you picked Kante? Kante is one of those players where, do you know, for how small he is and how lightly built he is, he yeah. can just turn a player on a sixpence. Like it's yeah. just unbelievable. He can hold the ball up, he passes it. He's strong as an ox. Like, <laughs> literally, I'm six foot seven. I couldn't even hold him, Dad. Yeah, it's, the point that, it's the point that he is, and I don't know how he's done it for his whole career, but it's just he's a solid, solid centre midfielder in the point mm-hmm. that he gets the ball, he passes it, he gets in a triangle play, he'll go one, two, and then he'll just slap you in. And that's that, to me, is the way that Leicester won the Premier League. I mean, he's the only centre mid right here, which is kind of weird. Has won the um, player of the season, which is kind of weird with some of these names on the list, but he is yeah. the only midfielder to win it. Yeah, 100%. Only, have you got Kante in your team? No, I don't. Okay. Oh, my <laughs> um, don't I, like I said, though, I, I again, like I said, like it was a really tough decision for me, and I based my centre mids off, um, off who I thought was like unsung heroes, if you like. So for me, Fabregas was amazing. Fabregas was one of them players that, again, wouldn't do, well, yeah, wouldn't do much in terms of, like, filling stats, but just technically gifted. Like, he was ju- he'd naturally meant to be a midfielder. Oh, he naturally did come, he did would he's find got, the right players. I mean, he has got 111 assists, bro. Fabregas. If you did say Fabregas, didn't you? Because you were lugging out then. Yeah. Yeah, well, he has like, got 111 he, assists. Like, that says it all. Like, he... he, he, he Naturally, is gifted and naturally knows where to play a ball. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Then. Um, I do that. I do rate the Fabregas shout. I, I think it has fair play, Michael. He has been quality, Annie, at his time. Yeah, Fabregas um, has been quality. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I've got um, Kante, so Kante gets in for me. Even though um, my other shout was Yoyo Torre, because I feel like Yoyo Torre on his day was unreal, unplayable. Mm. That, yeah, season that, got, that season when he got like twenty he goals, he nearly made it for me as well. Yeah, so yeah. and they weren't even like bad goals as well. Like they were so. Oh well no, some screamers. Yeah, so we've got Kante mm. and David Silver in midfield. So, Owen, who's the other centre midfielder? Who's the last centre midfielder for you? For me, it's Big Kevin from Man City. Kevin. Yeah, why? Why Big he's, Kevin? He's just, he's just quality. Like he's just, he's just a great player. Again, 
naturally like is the right kind of player for a midfielder. Finds passes, finds plays. Yeah. He's also technically Unreal. gifted. He oh, can yeah. shoot. He could, he, you know, he could play anywhere and be good at what he does. Mm-hmm. He's got six to assist, which is impressive. Played and played. To be fair, he's been in, right now. He's been involved in um, what is it? Uh, Ninety-three goals in 146 appearances in the Prem. That is mental. Them stats that's are all incredible. Yeah, like that is work up. That is that is build up play. I've got the shadow of a doubt. That's I've got the Bruyne too for the same reasons that he's probably one of my favourite players right now to watch and probably the best midfielder right now. But I think he's been the best midfielder of a decade as in when it comes to um, creativity and actually putting a ball into the box. But Michael, obviously De Bruyne gets in the team, but let's hear your shout because we know it's Frankie. I've gone, yeah, I've gone for Frank Lampard. In just the purest state, obviously, I know he was coming up to the end of his career. It was the point he was coming into the last stage of his career. But it's the point when it's coming up to the last stage of his career, he was still one of the best midfielders you will, you will see in the, in the Premier League. It's the point when he was there, yeah, he, he still was. pinged the ball over. When he went to Man City, I know he was sitting on the bench week and he came on sometimes, but he he showed he scored against Chelsea for God's sake. That Chelsea that's not yeah, Chelsea that team where he scored, didn't he? Yeah. It's it's the point that in him in midfield is just the way that football to me is supposed to be played in the point that you you pass the ball, you get it back, you play a player through it, you uh, play a player through. He did it with Derby last season. And that's the football that you saw in the counter-attacking way that the centre halves came up a bit more as well. You had a you had a deep line of defence as well. And to me, that's he he brought that in the stage that uh-huh. in his later years he brought that into the club and he brought that into the playing stage of his career. Do you know what, mate? If we if we were doing, we might do this one day. This might be another video to do in the future. If you did Premier League of all time, for me, he gets in my midfield. Yeah, yeah he's in there. Yeah. 100% yeah. right yeah. down. But I, like, I, because of this decade... I can't, I can't even like disagree with you, Michael. But the only reason he's not in there for me is, yeah, like I said, it's the decade. But yeah. you have got a very fair argument. And I yeah. do think that a lot of people would agree that still within this decade, he yeah. was still class. Well, he was anyway, but just for me... He's definitely, he's definitely just, our bench. He's definitely one of the three subs in the decade. Oh, yeah. 100%. And, uh, yeah. Right, now I'll move on to attackers, where basically what we've done is Instead of doing like a right wing left wing, we've all agreed that attacking in general. Mm-hmm. About striker, yeah. right, left wing, if it's, you know what I mean. So, the short list for um, the attackers of the decade. Sergio Aguero, 261 appearances, 180 goals, 4 8 assists, and won the Premier League four times and the Golden Boot, and the golden boot once. Diego Costa, 89 appearances, but in them 89 appearances, he got 52 goals and 16 assists and won the Prem twice. Eden Hazard played 245 times for Chelsea, 85 goals, 54 assists, and won the Premier League twice. Also won player of the season. Harry Kane has had 201 appearances, scored 136 goals and 20 assists, and won the Golden Boot twice. Um, Lukaku has got 252 appearances, 113 goals and 35 assists. Wayne Rooney has got 491 appearances, 208 goals and 103 assists. Two titles this decade and one Premier Premier League Player of the Year in this decade. Raheem Sterling's got 250 appearances, 77 goals, 40 assists, and 20, and, uh, 20 sorry, two times champion. Uh, Luis Suarez is also on the shortlist with 110 appearances, 69 goals, 23 assists, one Golden Boot, and one Player of the Year. And last but not least, Van Persie, who's got 280 appearances, 144 goals, 54 assists. Won Golden Boot twice, also won the Prem once. And the honourable mentions, like always, we've gone for Drogba, we've gone for Mane, we've gone for yeah. Salah, Sanchez. There's so many, isn't there? Yeah, there's been so many quality strikers and wingers throughout the time in the Prem. So, is it, is it fair to say we've all got Aguero? Uh, I don't have Aguero. I don't have Aguero. But, oh my <laughs> days! The only oh, reason. That's now. It, for me, for me, oh, my. for him, for me, him and Van Persie are, are neck and neck. The only reason I picked Van Persie was just because I preferred him as a player. Oh my! It's the only, it's the only man. sort of, it's the only way I can see it differently. I'm sorry, I, you're I'm not, not. I'm not doubting that he's not a good player. Like he's a phenomenal player. Just for me, I just thought Van Persie was just a bit more 
like physically he's a bit he's 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 a bit he's a bigger guy. He's just he sort of has a bit more command on his positional sort of area of the pitch. That's the only reason I picked Van Persie over over Aguero. Why, where it was I, so tight though. I'll tell you why Aguero does get in this team and will get in this team is because of this. Most goals this decade, Aguero. Most Premier League titles this decade, Aguero. Arguably, at times, world best striker, Aguero. Yeah, now, yeah, I can agree with that. So you're between Van Persie and Aguero, right? Fair enough. Michael, all right then. I'm, I'm actually gobsmacked. I'm honestly gobsmacked. I'm disappointed in both of you. Have we, have we all got Aiden Hazard? Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course we have. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, Aiden Hazard. Right. No shadow of a doubt that he's going to be in there. I think Aguero deserves it more, but we've got at least we agree with that. Hazard, we can all agree, on his day, was on the, one of the world's best players. Yeah. Obviously, Barran and Messi are like a, a different Yeah. Team. Like well, a league of below category. Them. Yeah. So people that aren't human, <laughs> Messi and Ronaldo, Yeah. <laughs> Hazard Talk about human it. players, like yeah. like just normal, regular people. Yeah. <laughs> Especially that like year one player of the season. Like the reason why Hazard, I know some people haven't got Hazard on the team a decade due to because one season he'll be brilliant, and the next season he would just like he took one of players away. If he turn it on, he'd be amazing. He didn't always turn it on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, he no. He, he'd, sometimes he'd like. Yeah, sometimes he'd win in the game single handedly. I'm saying, don't get me wrong. We've all got him in our team, a team of decade because of how good he was yeah. on his day. Mm-hmm. He's, he's just yeah. too, I can on see his the day. argument. I can see the argument where it's like, well, if I had some of these players, some of years he just had, he had a year yeah. off. Do you know what I mean? Like he literally did have a year. Yeah, off. he's the he's yeah. the reason he's, yeah. he's the reason he nearly missed out for me was purely because he he is inconsistent. Like of, yeah. of the three players, of, of the players in this team, he's probably the most inconsistent, Agreed. arguably. But all- at the same time, when he's on his day. My God, can he play? So we've definitely got in hand on him, which is good. So Michael, who's your second striker? Your second attacker? The second attacker is Luis Suarez. I've contradicted myself twice. I've contradicted <laughs> myself. I'm going to contradict myself three times. <laughs> if, if so to say, I have contradicted myself. I just thought about this right. and I just thought, right, okay, what well, I've made an argument of in the first bit, then I've not really done here. But. <laughs> I've gone, I've gone Luis Suarez. I'm just going to tell you my front three, if so. So you know that I've got Eden Hazard. Mm-hmm. I've got Luis Suarez and Harry Kane. So Luis right. Suarez, for me, just is, is the player that, that you've always dreamed of, if so to say. He's, he's, he's the goal scorer that, for me, if, if he was at Man City, probably would have done exactly the same as King Aguero. No, no shadow of a doubt. He won the play. Of the, I think he won the play of the season. Golden Boot in the same season. Yeah, he did. He did. Um, yeah, he did. When Liverpool nearly won the league, when Gerrard mm. did that slip, <laughs> um, but that earned him the move to Barcelona. And, and it's the point in Barcelona: how many league titles has he won over there, and how many Champions Leagues has he won? Agreed. But I ain't bothered at La Liga. We're talking yeah. primarily. <laughs> I, I know and, the the reason, and the reason why Suarez doesn't get in my team is the fact that he's only here for three years. That would yeah, be why I didn't get it. Same with Costa. Well. Okay, but how many goals did he score in those two years? Uh, 16... Where is he? Where is he? Oh, 69 goals. 69 goals. How many goals has Aguero scored in 10 years? No, but appearances is just double, nearly. So, 180. So, they're probably on, like, roughly about the same rate of goals. Yeah, uh, the same rate of goals. is the point. Because, the... obviously, Aguero's been injured a lot, hasn't he? Yeah, Aguero has been injured a lot. I get that. Injuries do take a lot of toll in certain players' seasons and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. You've got to look at the state that when Luis Suarez did come out, which was, it didn't even cost him that much. It cost him less for him than Andy Carroll. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Andy, Car- yeah. Andy Carroll came for about, was it how much was, it was Andy Carroll? a great Carroll? bit of business. 30 million or 50. 30, yeah. I think it was four, no, it was 40 million. Then uh, Suarez came for something like 25 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. From Ajax. It just goes to show how crazy oh, the football world can be, doesn't it? Yeah, it's mm-hmm. just, uh, and he went well, even, I mean, it wasn't. English players overhyped where well. A foreign yeah. a Uruguayan player wasn't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Completely agree. Right, I mean, have you got Suarez in your team? I don't have Suarez. Purely Who agreeing you with you, Dylan, that for me, he wasn't in the Premier League long enough. Right, uh, I've got Rooney. And, and who's your uh, one? Van Persie. So Rooney, Van Persie and... Rooney. Hazard. Hazard. Oh, right, of course. Of course. Right, so we're supposed to get a bit different. They're my, they're my top... Because we've all got different ones, haven't we? Because I've got... Have you got Kane? I've got Kane, yeah. Right, I've got Kane too, right? 
So Kane gets in, in that case. Me. So Kane gets in because it's two to one. So we've got Kane has because... and we still need a third. The reason why I got Kane in because of like like his goal record is actually unreal. Like two hundred and one got appearances with one hundred and thirty six goals and twenty assists. One hundred and fifty six goals and two hundred and one appearance. Like sorry, two hundred and fifty six goal contributions in two hundred and one appearances, which is mental. And like and he's won yeah, he's but... also won two golden boots. And if you play for anyone for Tottenham, like you said, a bit like Suarez, Michael. Play for Man City, he'd won the league, won he? Plenty of times. Oh, plenty, plenty, and plenty of times. Uh, um, um, it's the point that with the with the thing is with Kane. I arguably think he's the best striker in the world. In my point of view, I think he's the the best striker in the world. You can't look at his goals. The goals against Arsenal, mm. he scored some amazing goals. And you, mm. you put you put a lot of people say I was a tapping artist, but the thing is, Thierry Henry was a tapping artist. Most greatest mm. players in the world are tapping sure, artists. Yeah. And, 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 and then Thierry Henry yeah. scored that goal when when he's followed it over his head. Yeah, I get that. But Kane scored one against Arsenal, which was one of the, probably the greatest goals in that in the Arsenal versus Tottenham. Right, probably ever. I mean, I've got Kane just because I think, he, like you said, the first decade in quality. So for the last position, lads, I'm still going to fight to the end of this podcast for Aguero because the guy is unreal. Like, the guy gave us like every non Man United fan, one of the best moments in Premier League history. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not just saying I mean, that. But... I mean, and also, his goals are unreal. Like, let's, he's played 261 times, right? I'm trying to do some quick maths now. In 261 appearances, he's got 126, no, 226 goal contributions in 261 games. That's like a goal contribution like every two games. He's won the Premier League four times and a goal and boot once. Now, if that doesn't justify him being in the team of the decade, when he, when he signed in 2010 yeah, till 2020, I don't know what else. So if I put Aguero up, Mike, who are you putting up for the last spot? Yeah, for now, at this point in time, I am, and then I'll see what my arguments are. Um, Owen, who are you putting forward as the last spot? Has any of your picks got in yet? Oh, yeah, how's that done? For me, like, I would pick, like, for me, I over, like, it was a neck and neck race between Aguero and Van Persie. The only reason I picked Van Persie was, for me, he was more physically, like, his physical attributes were better than Aguero's, like, his, his control on the pitch. But for the sake of the argument, I would give it Aguero over Suarez. Because for me, Suarez, just as good as he is and as good as what he was at the time, when he was in the Premier League, two, it's just not long. He's not yeah, been yeah. there for the full decade. So if you it's not it, long enough so for me. If you're me. picking Aguero over Suarez, Michael, would you pick Aguero over Van Persie? I'd pick Aguero over Van Persie every day of the week. So, I, don't, so I personally don't, I don't think that Van Persie had... I, like, I, don't, I know a physical presence he did have, but the thing is, in this day and age of, tw- of 2020 and 2020, can you tell me that... Except for Kane, one striker that's over the size of Kane or, or Van Persie. There's none. Okay. Every single, every yeah, single. So, player, yeah, I can agree with Lukaku that. Done. What's the Kaku done? Uh, himself uh, yeah, a true. trip over to Inter Milan. He's not. The guy's hey. a donkey. The guy's a donkey. Brian League is better than people think. He needs some more respect. Anyway, so <laughs> do love his Italian league. I do love my Italian league. You'll learn that. The Corona League. My Corona League. No, that's China. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we got Aguero in, yeah? Michael, we happy with that? Yeah, we lost Owen, in Aguero, locking in Aguero? Yeah, that's fine with me. All right, so here's the team of the decade. It's chosen by three footballing experts. <laughs> experts. Yeah. <laughs> experts. Exactly. Lightly. Um, in goal, we've got Petr Cech. Right back, Walker. Left back, Baines. Captain of the team, company. Along with Van Dijk. Yeah. Back. In midfield, David Silva, Kante, De Bruyne. Up front, Hazard, Kane and Aguero. Quickly, before we wrap it up, um, mm-hmm. who would be your coach of a decade, Michael? Who's managing this team? Managing this team? Oh, it's some good ones this year. I'll put, put you on the spot. To, here. to me, it's between Pep and Jose Mourinho. Yeah. Interesting. Owen? I'll give it Pep. Yeah. Well, Maybe I don't know because... Mourinho because I think he peaked pre-2010. Don't get me wrong, like, Yeah. But it's weird. No, I, I say that. Well, yeah, it did because Jose's best times were like at the start of the decade, but obviously he was with Inter Milan when he won the treble and then Madrid. 
Obviously, yeah, he's bounced around a lot more. In, in, within the Premier League, he's bounced around. Perhaps won it obviously twice and now. Was, obviously, had Ferguson Pep's, again. Ferguson only won it twice. You could argue Ferguson as well. Um, again, that was more earlier on, wasn't it? True. But Pep was more late on. I don't mean there's yeah. been one manager, but it's been. Unless you're unless you're a class thingy, Michael, Sean Dyche. <laughs> Sean Dyche, yeah, solid. <laughs> or Eddie Howe. Eddie yeah. Howe's been there all, all these yeah. years, hasn't he? So. Even though I think Eddie Howe, well, that's a different debate, but I think Eddie Howe's a bit of a fraud. But that's for another. That's for another. Uh, <laughs> that's for another video. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I want to say, Michael, thanks for coming on. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's we'll get, been a we'll, pleasure, mate. We'll definitely get him on when it comes to more debates like this. So we have three, you know, two against one instead of two and two. Three, three arguments, yeah. Yeah, Derby, um, pod- Derby podcast, the Forest podcasts. <laughs> There's no anyway. debate in that. It's probably better than them, so it doesn't matter, oh, does it? This really case, so, so we'll just it forget about like, this decade. Anyway, for you. Um, decade. Don't know, this decade's gone on real for us. Well, apart from coronavirus. Um, We've won the, the, won the last three, I think, haven't we? No, we lost the middle, didn't we? Anyway, that's another story. Owen, thank you for coming on, even though you're in your car. I hope your yeah. room gets decorated. Oh, I'm sure it will do. Every room in the house um, should be back in the room soon. <laughs> Is that well? You should be because I've got three podcasts lined up for the next three days, so you should be. I know we've got some some heavy filming to we've do. Got, so we've got some, yeah, we've got some decent guests coming. So I look forward to sharing that with you all. But yeah, make sure if you like this video, like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. Get our socials; they'll be on screen right now. Um, I'll go put Michael's socials in the description. So if you want to look at that sexy muggy, go look at him. <laughs> yeah, guys, thanks for watching. See you in a bit. Cheers, guys. Thank you.